And Prof, good morning. Thank you for talking to us. So how important is this, uh, the extraction of this RNA, COVID-19 RNA, and linked to uh, wastewater treatment plants? Yes, it's a uh, uh, good morning to you and the listeners. It's a very significant moment because from an epidemiological perspective, one of the big missing pieces of data has been an understanding of what the total viral load in society is. And now with the uh, advancement of technologies, uh, laboratory technologies, uh, we've managed to demonstrate firstly that in South Africa we can actually extract the, the RNA. And now the next step will be to, to figure out how we can actually quantify the total viral load. That's a scientific mathematical problem that we're dealing with as we speak, and that's part of a global initiative to improve the science. But the important thing is that we've demonstrated that it is capable in a very short period of time because it was just eight weeks ago that we started working on this, and in eight weeks we've assembled the team, got it together, got the logistics together, and we've done it. So when we say you are extracting the COVID-19 RNA from wastewater treatments, uh, treatment plants, we're literally talking about, is, is it you guys, this is the dirty job of going through our, you know, our poo um, and basically just trying to paint a picture of how COVID-19 is spreading in communities? Yes, so um, after the, the SARS and the MERS uh, pandemics in China, uh, the Chinese actually did a lot of the pioneering work. And they found that uh, human waste, urine and feces actually shed virus. So, so that, that's where this thing started. Um, so so the, whole, the whole notion then was if, you can, if, 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 if human waste sheds virus, how can you measure it? And that's where the technological advances have taken place within the laboratories now about how to find minute pieces. It's not actually, uh, in inverted commas, living, living uh, virus. It's actually pieces of dead virus that you pick up those bits and pieces and you can reconstruct the virus if you like. It's almost it's a forensic exercise. And therefore, because it's a forensic exercise, one has to preserve the forensic chain of evidence from, from the, the sampling point all the way through to the lab. And that's really what we've managed to demonstrate now, that that is possible. Because any breakdown in that forensic link starts contaminating the samples and then you start getting, uh, getting wild and, uh, and, un and unpredictable outcomes. And, Prof, we have over 820 wastewater treatment plants around the country. Once you've done the process you just described now, does it make it possible then to pinpoint where the spread of the virus is, you know, sort of um, raging uh, and, and therefore more interventions would be needed? Does it help us to geographically locate and trace um, the spread of the virus? Yes, so uh, you, you're entirely correct. So of the 824 wastewater works, ideally what we would like to see happen is every one of those wastewater works have a sampling point, and every one of those samples gets collected on a weekly basis, and that gets fed into, into many different laboratories, because logistically you can't feed it all into one laboratory, you know, just servicing the whole country. So ideally we would see that each major centre would have a laboratory with this capability, and then we have the logistical capability around that. But now what's interesting is we've only tested five different sewage works now. And of the five sewage works, we found three of them tested positive. One had a very, very small signal, and one had no signal at all. So in other words, just from that first sample run, the question now is why did that one, that, that, that one wastewater works have no signal? Does it mean to say that those people are, 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 are in fact healthy or uncontaminated? Or does it mean that in the forensic chain, maybe there was a contamination or something like that? This is an internal investigation that we have to do. But the important thing is uh, exactly what you were saying just now. As we start opening up our economy to reemploy people, we can now, with this method, start pinpointing hotspots and we can start isolating an area that needs special attention or we can almost go so far as to certify an area that is relatively virus-free. So, so this is an important uh, 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 forensic uh, investigative tool, and it's going to feed into uh, the, the, the gap in the current decision-making process for both businesses and government, because the risk is to both the private sector and to government. Lastly, Prof, how soon before we, get, we see this in operation, to use a term that's loved in government, how soon before we massify uh, what you have been able to do here? 
Well, we are, cu- we are currently in talks with government. We've been, we've been in, in close talks with various arms of government over time. Part of the complexity is that under this state of emergency, uh, uh, the government is fragmented now. So, so one, you know, you need to get different government departments uh, uh, into the same place to make the same decision. So we're reaching out at the moment to different government levels. We're working at all kinds of levels, and we're offering this facility because I, uh, if we get buy-in from government in a relatively short period of time, I would say within a month, we can actually have this running out, certainly in known hotspot areas in all the major city centres. Mm. Uh, so, so we want to be guided by government uh, on that. We don't want to just do that as a private initiative. We would like government to tell us, this is hotspot A, this is hotspot B, and then let's start building those supply chains uh, uh, you know, the whole value chain, the logistical chain uh, that, that's all about preserving the forensic evidence. All right, thank you for that. That is Professor Anthony Turton from the Center for Environmental Management at the University of the Free State.